All right, just a quick tour here. I'll show you how we're going to do this. We've got Space Station coming over in a few minutes. You can see the uh, circle around here. That is the footprint of it. Uh, and we are right where the red dot is there in War Road. So uh, if we're inside that circle, we should be able to hear uh, the space station. It looks like it's going to come darn near just over us to the north. So uh, there's two modes that are used uh, by the astronauts. One is a digital called uh, packet radio or uh, APRS. And then the other is voice. This morning, uh, I was sitting here working in the uh, station and all of a sudden NA1SS came on, which is uh, the call sign that the astronauts uh, from the United States use. Uh, they were doing a classroom interview with a school out in New Hampshire, so I decided to go ahead and uh, quickly threw the recorder on, recorded that, and I posted a video of it. I got about six minutes of it, so that was very cool. But uh, you never know if they're going to uh, be on voice or on packet. Typically they're on packet, and I've worked them a few times now. Uh, so I've got, I'm set up for both uh, packet and voice right now. So whichever way they're operating, I can attempt to uh, make a connection. So uh, I've got an app down here. This is called Direwolf, and what it is, is it's just a uh, sound card packet TNC. Instead of using a hardware TNC, we use just software in the sound card. And that is connected to this guy I think right here yep and this is our program that's going to actually beacon out uh, what we've got up here and I need to change this information because that's from a contact I had on earlier pass but uh, this one just sends my position so that they uh, it'll show up on a map uh, that they download that information to one of the ground stations and then it shows a map of where all the stations were that they uh, successfully had connection with so as far as the equipment, we'll come over here, and uh, this is my uh, Kenwood TMG 707, and it's a dual band radio. It's set up on their packet frequency right now, and if I, when they come into view, if they start squelch or uh, shooting out packets, I will see those on the screen. I'll know they're running packet. Also down here, I just have an old Radio Shack 2 meter mobile, and that's on their voice frequency, which is what... Uh, came up today. So if they happen to be on voice for any reason, I'll be able to go ahead and, uh, and and know that right away. So between these two radios, I should have a pretty good idea of where they're at when they come over. And uh, I'm just going to come back over here and we'll just see where they're at. Let's see. All right, we're getting close. So we should hopefully start to uh, hear something in the next few minutes. And uh, we'll see if we can make a successful connection. All right, so you can see I've changed my uh, I've changed my my beaconing message there. The one, of course, I got to put in a plug for War Road, Hockey Town, USA. Uh, the other is just a position indicator. Either one of them should put me on the map if I'm able to make a connection. So let's take a look and see where we're at with the satellite, and that we are just on the periphery of it. And what I'm going to do is put this radio up on their packet frequency. Let's see here. Oh, that's it. Yeah, my bad. So 45.825 is their packet frequency. If I do this, we can see the same thing. So we'll just listen and see if we start to hear some packets coming in. And this may not be the greatest pass if they're going to be darn near overhead. We can end up with uh, actually in a worse position than if they're out more to the horizon. And I'm just going to flip back. There, that's their voice frequency. We'll just go back and forth here. We'll see if we can hear something. Okay, if you can hear that, you'll hear it kind of get a little quieter. I've got the uh, 
the preamplifier on, but when it gets a little quieter, that's them transmitting a packet. So, looks like they're going to be on packet here. And we're going to go ahead and set up our beacon, because they're darn near right overhead. So we'll get this out of the way. Let's see. Put this guy up. And yeah, we'll put this guy up. And we're not seeing anything coming in yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and check my what what I'm beaconing. Okay, and we're gonna just send our text data. So we're good that way. Good that way, and all we gotta do is come up here and turn on our beacon. We'll hear it on the other radio when it sends, and you'll see it populate over on this screen. So I'll just force one in there. And there's what we're sending. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, we're here in the space station packet now a little bit. And once we... Once we actually have a strong enough signal from then, we'll see, uh, when their signal's strong enough, we'll see information come in on the screen here. So we'll know uh, that we're hearing them. Now they're starting to get a little stronger. And I'll just pause this till we get a little activity here. Oh, there's one. There's one popped in right there. And it got us. We just bounced one right there. See, it's via R0 ISS. So that came back down. It repeated through the uh, space station. So we'll switch here. We'll turn off our beacon. And... Oh, we get we did it again. So we're gonna send a position beacon and see if we can get her to take that, and that'll put us on their map then. And there we go. They got us. So they uh, we should show up on their map. So that's a successful connection. Nothing else we need to do. We'll let everyone else have the bird and do their thing. But uh, that's how it's done. Hope you enjoyed.